Welcome to Canadian Driver Knowledge Test, your ultimate guide to mastering Ontario's commercial driving knowledge tests. Get prepared, get confident, and hit the road safely. Subscribe now and start your journey to success. Question 1. A third or subsequent offense within the same two-year period will result in an impoundment period of what duration? A. 120 days. B. 30 days. C. 60 days. D. 90 days. The answer is C. 60 days. Question 2. On any given day, all drivers must have a period of at least how many consecutive hours off duty within the preceding 14 days? A. 24. B. 18. C. 12. D. 28. The answer is A. 24. Question 3. When climbing a steep hill and your speed decreases, what action should you take? A. Shift into a lower gear. B. Activate your four-way flashers. C. Drive with your left signal on to indicate to others they should pass. D. None of the above. The answer is B. Activate your four-way flashers. Question 4. The interaxle differential lock is used on which types of vehicles? A. Fire trucks. B. Vehicles with tandem rear axles. C. Tandem trailers only. D. None of the above. The answer is B. Vehicles with tandem rear axles. Question 5. If approved, the Ministry of Transportation will provide an Hours of Service Exemption Certificate that grants full exemption from Hours of Service requirements until when? A. The load is delivered. B. The end of 30 days. C. The round trip after the load is delivered. D. The end of the calendar year. The answer is A. The load is delivered. Question 6. Why is it important to shift into a lower gear when descending long, 
Steep hills. A. It saves time. B. This will help control your speed and you won't have to brake as sharply. C. Better fuel consumption. D. All of the above. The answer is B. This will help control your speed and you won't have to brake as sharply. Question 7. To begin a new cycle, a driver on the 7-day cycle must take how many consecutive hours off duty? A. 36. B. 48. C. 32. D. 24. The answer is A. 36. Question 8. In a combination of vehicles, such as a truck tractor and semi-trailer, what does balance braking refer to? A. When the front brakes are applied at the same time as the rear brakes. B. When the trailer brakes are applied with the truck brakes using the foot control valve. C. When the driver uses gradual pressure to apply the brakes. D. None of the above. The answer is B. When the trailer brakes are applied with the truck brakes using the foot control Question 9. What is the required number of consecutive hours off duty for a driver to initiate a new 14 day cycle? A. 60. B. 72. C. 36. D. 48. The answer is B. 72. Question 10. What is the main tool for managing speed on long, steep grades? A. Engine brakes. B. Riding the brakes. C. Shifting to neutral. D. None of the above. The answer is A. Question 11. Why is it advisable to use a guide when backing up a vehicle? A. They can let you know if you've hit something. B. They can help you by watching the area into which you are backing and by keeping an eye on your blind spot zone. C. They can assist you with steering input to reach your destination. D. All of the above. The answer is B. They can help you by watching the area into which you are backing and by keeping an eye on your blind spot zone.
Question 12. On a road without a median strip, when must you stop for a school bus with its upper lights flashing? A. When approaching in all directions. B. When approaching a cross street. C. If you are coming from behind the bus. D. All of the above. The answer is C. If you are coming from behind the bus. Question 13. When stopped for a school bus with its upper lights flashing, how long must you remain stopped? A. When the bus begins to move again. B. Until the arm folds away and all lights stop flashing. C. Until the arm folds away and no traffic is approaching. D. When the stop sign stops flashing. The answer is B. Until the arm folds away and all lights stop Question 14. When using a guide to assist with backing up, what should the driver and guide do to ensure clear communication? A. In front of the truck. B. On the passenger side at the rear. C. In a position to see you and the area to the rear of your vehicle clearly. D. Anywhere you ask them. The answer is D. Question 15. When stopping at railway crossings, how far from the nearest rail or gate should you stop? A. At least 5 meters. B. At least 3 meters. C. At least 10 meters. D. At least 4 meters. The answer is A. At least 4 Question 16. How many demerit points do you receive for failing to stop for a stop school bus? A7. B3. C6. D4. The answer is C. Question 17. What should you check to ensure you don't stop on railway tracks? Make sure you have enough room to cross the tracks completely before you begin to cross. B. Place the gears in the highest gear possible. C. Keep your momentum moving. D. All of the above. The answer is A. Make sure you have enough room to cross the tracks completely before you begin to cross.
Question 18. What should you do if you're unable to maintain the traffic speed? A. Turn off your lights. B. Activate your hazard lights. C. Take a different route. D. None of the above. The answer is B. Activate your hazard lights. Question 19. How long does it typically take for a train to stop when applying full emergency braking? A. Up to 3 kilometers. B. 750 meters. C. 500 meters. D. Up to 2 kilometers. The answer is D. Up to 2 kilometers. Question 20. What factors contribute to a larger off-track in a vehicle? The greater the distance, wheelbase, between the front wheels and the rear wheels of the vehicle. B. The size of the tires. C. When the truck has a tandem tire. D. The sharpness of the turn. The answer is A. The greater the distance, wheelbase, between the front wheels and the rear wheels Question 21. Under what conditions are drivers allowed to continue moving at pedestrian crossovers? A. Once the pedestrian is halfway across the road. B. Once the pedestrian has walked past your lane. C. When pedestrians are completely across the road. D. When the lights stop flashing. The answer is C. When pedestrians are completely Question 22. If you are driving a tractor trailer on a narrow street, what should you do to make a right turn without having the rear wheels of your unit mount the curb? A. Use some or all of the left lane. B. Signal early to warn drivers and pedestrians. C. Approach the turn in oncoming traffic. D. None of the above. The answer is A. Use some or all of the left lane. Question 23. Four vehicles manufactured in 1995 or newer. What is the minimum manufacturer's gross vehicle weight rating, MGVWR, at which speed limiters must be applied? A. 11,000 or less. B. 11,794 or more. C. 10,000 or less. D. 4,500. The answer is B. 11,794 or more.
Question 24. When approaching a stopped school bus with its upper lights flashing, what is the minimum distance you must stop behind the bus? A. 18 meters. B. 20 meters. C. 15 meters. D. 25 meters. The answer is B. 20 meters. Question 25. What is not a required step before crossing railway tracks? A. Flash your hazard lights to warn other traffic you will be slowing. B. Listen. C. Look both ways. D. Slow down. The answer is A. Flash your hazard lights to warn other traffic you will be slowing. Question 26. When performing an alley dock maneuver, which side is recommended for backing? A. The driver's side. B. Either side is fine as long as you have a clear view. C. The passenger side. D. Either side proved you have sounded the horn first. The answer is A. The driver's side. Question 27. Before backing up, which of the following is not a recommended precaution? A. Exit the vehicle and walk around to examine the area into which you must back. Look for overhead obstacles or wires, side clearances, pedestrians, or objects in your path of travel. B. Turn off phone slash radio. Close the windows to reduce fumes from entering the cab. C. Remember to use both rearview mirrors. Keep in mind the blind spot on the rear as vision is limited. D. Activate four-way flashers and sound horn. The answer is B. Turn off phone slash radio. Close the windows to reduce fumes from entering the cab. Question 28. What is the maximum speed, in km slash h, to which the speed limiting system of commercial motor vehicles should be set? A. 95 km per hour. B. 100 km per hour. C. 110 km h D. 105 km h The answer is D. 105 km per hour. Question 29. When being passed by a smaller vehicle while driving a larger commercial vehicle, what actions can you take to help ensure the smaller vehicle passes safely? A. Keep your speed to help that driver with their timing. B. Speed up slightly to match the flow of traffic. C. Slow down enough to allow the vehicle to fit in quickly and safely in front of you. D. Put on your hazard lights. The answer is C. 
slow down enough to allow the vehicle to fit in quickly and safely in front of you. Question 30. Which types of vehicles are required to stop at railway crossings that lack gates, signal lights, or stop signs? A. Police vehicles. B. Taxis. C. Buses and other public vehicles. D. Ambulances. The answer is C. Buses and other public vehicles.